Hello, if you're watching this video when it first is uploaded, you're probably going to notice that it is about Christmas stockings, and it is not Christmas. The original footage was taken around the holiday season, but I was unable to finish editing and uploading it before we left for winter break. By the time we got back, I thought it was too late for it to be seasonal, but I'm proud of how it turned out and I'd like to share it anyway. So here is some unseasonable Christmas-related content in April. If you're watching this in any subsequent Christmases, disregard this message. Hey, this is Gray. Today I'm going to be trying to make a tiny Christmas stocking, maybe as an ornament. So this is what I have so far. I made a little pattern, a little bit of seam allowance, and I have cut it out two pieces of this fabric. I am using this gold pine cone on green sort of stretchy velvety fabric. So we'll see how well that goes. I've made stockings in the past and they've turned out pretty good. The shape is a little silly, but I think I'm overall pretty satisfied with it. The fur that I have is really nice. So I think I always get confused about how to sew it on. So I'm gonna have to do that again. But once you fold it over, looks pretty cool. So, all right, I'm gonna start sewing. So I decided that I actually want to try sewing the fur on before I sew the two halves of the stocking together. So I am going to trace out two pieces of fur to fit on the top. Here I'm using the pattern as a reference for how wide to make it, and I'm guessing about how tall I want to make it, making it a little bit taller just in case. And I'm cutting really slowly, just barely snipping through the bottom fabric, trying not to give the long fur pieces a haircut. I use the first piece I cut out as a reference and cut the second piece exactly the same. And I'm double checking how I set up the fur on the first stocking and trying to set it up the same way except actually reversing the direction of them. So I looked at how the inside of this stocking was sewn and it is sewn wrong side to wrong side um, like this and it had the, f um, the fur grain going down when it was inside but then it ends up being going up when it's flipped. So I want it to actually go down when it's flipped. So I pinned it wrong side to wrong side with the fur going up so that hopefully it will be going down when it flips. Let's sew. The first thing I need to do is change the color of thread to match. I'm winding myself a bobbin and then getting the machine set up. I chose to sew with the fur side underneath and the green side on top so that the needle doesn't get caught in any of the fur. So I have these sewn up here like this, and now I'm going to pin them together and sew the edges and hope for the best. I wanted to sew with the grain of the fur when I did have to sew over it, so I actually decided to sew the stocking in two goes, starting at the middle bottom, so that I would be sewing down over the fur both times. I'm stopping and rotating the piece with the needle inside the work as many times as I need to to feel comfortable getting around the curves. I find this is a really easy way to readjust without sort of zooming off the edge.
noticed that the top fur pieces didn't end up quite even, so I trimmed them so that they were the same. It's right side out and you turn down the piece of fur. It looks a lot like a stocking. Awesome. It turned out great. But I didn't put the little hangy thing on the top corner, so I'm going to find some ribbon in a matching color and make that now. It looks about the right size, so I'm going to get that ready. And here I am folding the two edges under so that it's really tidy and flat. going to thread myself a needle and tie up the end with a little booger knot. I'm pre-sewing this to itself a little bit just to keep that nice fold together. Trimming off a little piece of weirdness there. Now I'm going to sew this through the furry top and attach it on. forget to finish it off with a couple of knots. The finishing touch will be adding an ornament hanger and this ornament will be ready to hang up on the Christmas tree. happy with how this turned out. I think it's really cute. It was fast and it's simple and it's definitely something I want to share with the students. There are definitely some things I would do differently. I think I might change the pattern to be wider at the top of the stocking itself because it seems to be a little disproportionate when you do close the fur down. I would definitely add in the ribbon while I was sewing instead of afterwards, I think it would be easier. And I would also change the fur to um, not have this external seam. It seems like at the end of the day, the best way to do that seam would be to sew the fur into a tube and then to attach it afterwards, even though it is a little bit easier to sew it on um, together. All right, round two. The first thing I need to do is create the new pattern with the extended widened top. And then it is pretty much the same as it was the first time. This time we're doing the ribbon while we're sewing and not after.
and here you can notice me realizing that I am not going to be able to sew the cuff on to the stocking in the sewing machine because it is just too teeny tiny. So hand sewing it is going to have to be. And this is where I realized that, yes, the fur cuff is way too big for the size of the stocking. So I'm going to take it off and re-sew it to be significantly smaller to fit the size better and then sew it back on again. I leave this in because failure is an important part of sewing. And having to do things over again is like one of the most ubiquitous parts of any sewing project. And that's something that's hard to get used to, especially for a younger sewer. So I think that's an important part of the process. This is the finished take two on the stocking, the red stocking. The seams are internal here, and this is also inside the seam, which is pretty nice. Um, let's compare it to the original, well, the first attempt. So I think even though I used the same pattern on the bottom, the two bottoms of the stockings ended up a little different. I definitely prefer the shape of this first one, like, but I think overall this turned out cool. I learned some things that Something this small is gonna to need to be sewn by hand if you're gonna sew it together ahead of time. Now, what are my final thoughts on which one I like better, which ended up nicer? I feel like I like them both for different reasons. I think that the change to the pattern to make it larger at the top was not really like here or there. I feel like even just stretching it out a little bit at the top sort of changes something there. I think you're able to sort of control the placement of the ribbon better if you add it afterwards, but it's sturdier and it's better looking if you add it before. And um, yeah, I think another thing that I learned was that this velvet fabric is a huge pain in the butt, but it is pretty. So thanks for watching me make these two little stockings, and hopefully uh, you'll make them with me. Bye-bye.